Hi everybody, uh, we are here with Chris Roberts. We're very happy that we got uh, the chance to ask you a few questions. Actually, we uh, asked our viewers to send them some questions and we picked our eight favorite ones. Okay, so. sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna get started. People are very, very interested in the uh, later ship's in-game prices. Like if you compare an Aurora to a Constellation to an Idris, so what would people have to do? How much, uh, how long have, would they have to play to, to get these ships? Uh, that's so okay. So we're actually going through this right now, um, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we have is that if you think about so, like compared to the real world, so in our game, you can like the you know first of all the scale of things you can do is huge, right? It's not just running around first person. You can get in ships and you can fly, but you can get in all sorts of different size ships. Uh, so from a single you know, small single-seater ship to a huge multi-crew ship to a massive capital ship. And if you think about the real world, so if you think about, <clears throat> say, the cost of a, a pistol, a handgun, mm -hmm. yeah, probably, I don't know, $500. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what if you fly an F-16, right? Mm -hmm. So because that's kind of what a Hornet is, it's like an F-16. Well, you know, they're probably $19, $20 million. Uh, but then what if, uh, you know, you want to have a uh, carrier because you know you know I'm sure Bengal carrier well the you know the current carriers are like three billion dollars or four billion dollars I think it's even ten billion dollars now for the biggest new America one so there's a huge from five you know five hundred hundreds of dollars to millions of dollars to hundreds of millions of dollars to billions of dollars right so um, so that's actually kind of one of the the bigger challenges because it needs to be challenging at all levels and so we've been sort of working on the game pricing and Honestly, the pricing of our bigger ships that we've been doing for the pledges is like much less than they would be in the real world for the size and the capabilities of the ship that get bigger. Um, so I would expect to have more disparity in the game. And so that would mean that to earn a big capital ship would take a lot of work. But the kind of concept would be, well, that's the kind of thing that an organization would work together themselves to just like in real life, right? It, you would build up to work together to build. And of course, as you move to the bigger ships or you've got more people, you can take on jobs that pay bigger. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's just the same way as if you you you're a you know you're a you're a person that owns your own business and it's all you doing your own stuff, then you can only scale so big. But then as you mm -hmm. hire more people you can do more things. Um, so uh, as you get bigger ships and more people, then you take on jobs that make more, earn more money, which will mm -hmm. allow you to get bigger stuff, as well as also don't forget the bigger things you have, the more upkeep they cost, mm -hmm. right? Just like in the real, if you're like an oligarch and you've got your 250 foot, uh, you know, 250 foot yacht, mm -hmm. and that, you know, they cost five or $7 million just to keep, yeah. keep running every year, right? Mm -hmm. Not alone the $50 million you pay to buy the thing in the first place. So uh, we'll sort of have similar dynamics. Mm -hmm. I think the high-end ships probably won't be quite as, um, it, it won't be quite as geometric as it is in the real world now, because mm -hmm. you know, if you buy a Cessna uh, plane, I think mm -hmm. you can get one for like 100,000 or 150,000, but the, you want a jet, you're paying a few million dollars at least, and mm -hmm. 10 or 20 million dollars for sort of the Gulf Streams and stuff like that. And then, you know, you go on to the bigger ones, you know, you want a Boeing Transport, it's like, you know, a Boeing passenger liner, it's like a hundred million or so. So mm -hmm. there's more of a progression there, but we will definitely have um, in-game prices, we'll sort of have more progression. So, mm -hmm. you know, I could, I could see something like the Constellation costing, you know, significantly more in in-game credits than it does right now if you're mm -hmm. pledging and stuff. Uh, but we're still trying to balance with like kind of the the earning because also like I said the bigger the ship the 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 bigger the mission you can take on and the more you can earn so it's sort of hard to say how long it'll take you to earn say some of the biggest stuff because you know when you've just got an Aurora and you're starting out you don't you can't do some of the missions that you can earn more money but as you've earned that smaller money then you upgrade to a slightly more capable ship or uh, which will allow you to now earn missions that will get you more credits and I actually think a lot of like online games sort of have that progression like mm -hmm. the money you earn as a starting character is not the same money you would earn in a 50th level character in, mm -hmm. in a game.
Sure. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, next question was, uh, uh, in the early concepts, it, it's about PVP now. So, in the early uh, concept, there was uh, something mentioned like the PVP slider. And we just wanted to check if this is still, uh, you know, uh, part of the game or if there's uh, other concept concerning like people want to do PVP and other people want to do PVE only and stuff. Well, so so the way the the way the universe is uh, going to be set up. I mean, I've always said that it's like going to be ninety percent AI and about ten percent players. Mm -hmm. So the way we're setting up is that like a, a large amount of your interaction will be involving AI, even if you want to do PvP, and then uh, we'll set up the areas in uh, space where like whether you can fight other players. Because there's this whole idea of like monitored space. Mm -hmm. Like even we have it right now, like if you're in monitored space and you attack mm -hmm. another player, you become wanted and then it's then other players can go after you. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't have any repercussions and they can you know take you out and at a certain level they get money for taking you out. Mm -hmm. um, so we're probably gonna do, because we're trying to work on technology that won't instance the game as much so everyone's in the same sort of space, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So in that, the model's gonna be uh, you know, there's a lot of AI combat in general, mm -hmm. and then there'll be some areas that will be unmonitored, and some uh, areas will be monitored. Mm -hmm. and the monitored areas, sort of PvP, uh, can happen, but if it does, you're probably going to be taken out pretty quickly. And if uh, and then there'll be some monitors where it won't, where it'll sort of be free for all, which is mm -hmm. kind of what originally I was saying was that I would have areas where you could go to, and mm -hmm. it could be a PvP area, and then there'd be areas that would be sort of not PvP areas, mm -hmm. and then uh, we may possibly still have some level of a slider in case in, in terms of being interdicted by AI or interdicted by other players if you're traveling somewhere mm -hmm. but in in uh, so that's kind of the current approach so it's not too dissimilar to what I what I talked about other than the fact that we're going to try and get all the as many players as possible into the same instance okay Cool, thank you very much. The other one was, uh, uh, what's the current status of the, the voice chat? Is there any timeline, any idea when we can uh, get, have voice chat inside Star Citizen? Uh, so, wait for Citizen Con and we'll show some stuff. <laughs> okay, that was good, quick one. Uh, the other one was, uh, 2.6 will feature uh, Star Marine and uh, people were wondering if uh, the setable will be included in there. Any idea? Oh, uh, no, in the first version, uh, 2.6 won't have Satterball in it. It's mm -hmm. going to have Star Marine, and then it's going to have a bunch of Arena Commander improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Star Marine we're doing has... Um, it, it has... Uh, so there's more on the, the sort of flow and the combat. We've, like, mm -hmm. we, we've sort of refactored kind of the arena, the, well, the, the level that you'll be fighting on. Mm -hmm. um, but Satterball will be for a later patch, so it mm -hmm. won't be in the first one. Okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, first, the first whole uh, star system we get will be Stanton. So, is there any idea which one could be next? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, at some point we'll do Terra because we've we've been working on that, but I don't know exactly what the next one's going to be. Uh, we're sort of uh, we're working on so the way we're approaching it is we're working on a bunch of different uh, architecture sets that we build things with um, for various different locations. Uh, so there's kind of a, an opportunity, but you can sort of uh, assume that the systems that we'd work on would be the ones that would be um, co-located with Stanton. So mm -hmm. the ones that you can jump to from Stanton would be the ones that we'd be working on. Okay, so then the, uh, the last two are going to be a little bit more personal. So what's your favorite controller setup? Is it like a HOTAS or a, a, you know, game controller, mouse, keyboard? What do you prefer? Uh, so it depends uh, on what I'm doing because you know we do all sorts of things FPS, EVA. Uh, so I can and and also depends on what I'm sort of demoing. So for flight, I'd prefer like the joystick hotel mm -hmm. setup. Um, for like running around doing FPS combat, I much prefer like mouse and keyboard. The only problem with the keyboard is you don't get really good precision in terms of controlling your speeds, like when you move around. Uh, so sometimes. Especially when I do demos, the you know I use the gamepad because it's sort of a compromise between a joystick and a, mm -hmm. a mouse, where you because yeah. you have the analog sticks on it. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so generally, I mean, I have sort of all of uh, them set up there. So it sort of sort of depends. So it'd be hard to say because even if you know, I don't know if you noticed, but like when our guys were playing, they they had all we didn't ha we didn't do hot tests just because it was we didn't have like a raw room on mm -hmm. that setups. Uh, but they were moving between game pads and mouse and mm. keyboard all the time, depending on what they were doing. Mm. So like for the sort of flight and control, they were using the, the game pads because they, yeah. they're basically two little joysticks. So you have sort mm -hmm. of that precision that becomes harder with the mouse. But for the FPS stuff, they were using the mouse. Okay. 
Yeah, cool. And the last one, uh, if you would be uh, like, imagine just being a regular backer yourself, what career would you personally choose in Star Citizen? Would it be a trader or miner or even like the notorious Pirate Roberts? Uh, I don't know. It would be interesting. I think it would probably be between, um, it would probably be between uh, exploring and being a pirate. I think those would be the two. Not so much trading. I, I, I find that a bit boring. Like, basically, the trading would be more about earning the money to be able to upgrade things that I could do the other things with. Uh, but those would be the two. It would be exploration or it would be being sort of... The, the outlaw. The outlaw, yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for that. Uh, last request was, again, to uh, say our slogan in the camera. It's uh, see you on the flight deck. Would you do that for us? Yes, absolutely. So I'll see you guys on the flight deck. <laughs> thank you very much, Chris Roberts. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Bye, guys.